Hi everybody, welcome to another New Jersey Forensic Accountant discussion. Today we're going to talk about lost profits. Lost profits affect lots and lots of businesses and there's many ways they can be affected. Often there's a situation involving a supplier or the, they, they had a fire or something like that. They lose sales, they lose profits. But the big misconception a lot of people have about this is that I'll have someone come into my office and say the supplier didn't provide us the material and we couldn't we had no sales for three months and we lost ten million dollars but that's sales it's not lost profits okay because when you don't have a sale there are costs that were avoided because you didn't have the sale right the cost to produce the widgets the commissions all that did not have to be paid and the formula for calculating lost profits is right here lost profits equals lost revenues minus avoided cost. That's the formula. Now, when we have an engagement, the first thing we do is we go in and do a cost analysis. What are the variable costs? What are the fixed costs? What are the semi-variable costs, right? We do this because once we calculate the revenues, right, we can then calculate and subtract the avoided cost. That is their lost profits. Now, let me go through an actual case because it is a little bit confusing without understanding how this actually works. For example, a while back we had an international retailer call us and they said, listen, we have a store located on a major thro throughway in, in New Jersey. And they, the uh, state came in and they had this major reconstruction project and they covered the this massive billboard that was outside the store and it was also an access ramp a little way up on the highway and cars would pull in and pull into the parking lot and, and go into the store and some people would buy furniture. So anyway, they lost the access ramp too and sales were down by like twenty million dollars. So we had to go in and calculate, figure out what costs were associated with the furniture. I think it was like a thirty percent, you know, the, the cost of the furniture was like thirty percent so that was six million dollars and then there were some commissions and things like that. So their actual lost profits were somewhere around ten million dollars. But this was a lot more complicated because this also incurred at the same time as a recession. So some of those $20 million in sales were not because people could not get off the highway. Some of those were because of the recession. And the other thing was that the location actually ended up uh, going out of business because this happened for a period of years. So we had lost profits, but we also had lost business value. But here's the, the thing. Now, in order to calculate the cost, and, and prove that, okay, this was, this was the result of recession and this was a result of losing the sign and the access ramp, I actually brought in a sign expert to assist us in testimony. And what he did was he, he had formulas that showed with this kind of traffic, you can expect this many people to pull off the highway and then of those, this many will buy furniture. So we were able to calculate, because <laughs> we both had to testify, uh, un under at least depositions, in order to prove that the sign resulted in this in this amount of lost sales, and then we also had to go in and look at the recession. Well, this is the portion of the sales we lost because of the recession, and you know we did a lot of calculations. We went through a couple of depositions. This actually ended up settling out of court, but this is just kind of when you have lost profits, this is what you have to do. Now, anytime you're dealing with lost profits, you want to go to the expert. And, and we're the expert at testifying, but the expert on on actual is is Robert Dunn. And here's two of his here's his books, and these books are great. And it gives you a really good background, a legal background, and also you know some forensic accounting in there. But basically, what Dunn says on is that okay, the proximate cause rule. And what this basically says is, for example, we had to prove in this case, the furniture case, the furniture retailer case, that the sales were lost directly because of what the state did and we were able to prove that I mean because you you can't you have to have some causation and again this is more legal than forensic accounting but as a forensic account we can't testify unless it's clear to us that those damages resulted from some action and the other thing is that you have to have reasonable certainty now I can't go up and testify and say well you know maybe it could be I have to be reasonably certain. Now, abs you can't be absolutely certain about anything, unfortunately, but you can be reasonably certain. And Dunn goes into, you know, basically the whole book is about these two concepts here, and he talks about different 
methodologies and stuff like that. But, you know, we go through this constantly anytime we get a, a pretty complex case in-house. And it, it, it's important to understand not only, you know, how to do it and, and, you know, the formula we talked about, but also the proximate cause rule and the reasonable certainty rule. Now, let's talk about some key elements of a lost profits claim. Okay, one, plaintiff loss is proved with a reasonable degree of certainty, right? That's from Dunn's book. Uh, two, the trier of fact, they have to be satisfied, right? Because if even if you think it is and everybody else thinks it is, if the judge does not or the jury does not, then you're not going to win. And three, uh, there has to be some basis for the claim, right? Ba pretty basic stuff. Now, three things that must be proven by the plaintiff. Okay, one, defendant breached the legal duty. Two, defendant's actions or failure to act damaged the plaintiff. And three, the plaintiff's damage are approximately related to the defendant's action. Now, remember, we're, as forensic accountants, really just focused on preparing a report for the actual damages, the money claim, you know. But this other stuff has to back it up, and a lot of times what we will do is discuss this with the, uh, the, the attorneys to make sure that um, we have all this going into court, and, and a lot of times they will build a foundation and establish all this before we even testify. And also, we can rely on their expertise in this area when, and under deposition and say, yes, I, I discuss this with X attorney, and I am satisfied based on blah, 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 blah. So, now the first step in, in computing lost profits is to determine the lost revenue, right? Because remember the formula, right? Lost revenue minus avoidable cost. This, uh, you know, this is basically revenue they would have earned but for the actions of the defendant, right? In the furniture case, they would have had an additional $20 million of sales. And again, this happened over a period of years, so it was like $60 million. But those sales would have been earned. And we were reasonably certain that they would have based on our calculations and reliance on other experts and stuff like that. But there's three basic ways to calculate these damages. One is before and after method, right? The year before, the furniture, the furniture they had sales of X amount. Right, and they were increasing in prior years. All of a sudden, they fell off a cliff. Okay, so we had it before and after. We compared it before the state took the sign down and removed the access ramp, and after. And in addition to that, you know, we had um, the sign expert who was able to back it up too. But to remember, you know, we had a recession, so some of those lost sales were traceable to the recession, and we were able to go into other stores and see what their sales decrease was and then compare it to ours and really just isolate uh, the sales that were lost because of losing the sign and the billboard and, and the access ramp. Now the other method is a yardstick method and what this is is ratios or uh, you know that type of stuff and this is typically done when you have like a startup company there's no history okay there's ways to like we, we have companies call us and they they never had a sale and they were put out of business you know, something happened where somebody reneged or someone stole their code and they never opened up their store. They never opened up their business. Happens a lot in software. So they never had sales. But how do you have damages? Well, you can calculate damages based on what other companies did and, and using this, what we call the yardstick method. It's, it's you know, these, and these methods are accepted, you know, throughout the country in all courts. Now, the other thing is the but-for method. And what that, it's kind of like adds on to these damages. And what you're basically saying here is, listen, you know, this client had to spend X amount of time and X amount of money uh, on this legal issue because you guys did X, right? And these damages are added on to the other claim. So you have this but-for claim. So, listen, we went through this pretty quick, but again, this is just a quick overview. If you guys have any questions, leave them below. You know, if you do uh, like this YouTube, you know, I appreciate it if you guys would um, sign up for our YouTube channel. Um, thanks for listening.